Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example is what we would call a water bomb. We have a very strong metal with water inside at an initial temperature of 10 degrees centigrade. Then the water and the bomb, the metal around it, is increased in temperature to 75 degrees centigrade. Now, assuming that the metal is very strong, so the only change in the metal is that it actually expands due to the heat increase, but it's able to withstand the enormous pressure from the increased pressure inside the water. The question then is, what will be the increase in pressure inside the water with the 65 degrees centigrade increase in temperature? So we do need to know the coefficient of linear heat expansion of the metal. We have the, the uh, volume expansion of the water, and we have the bulk modules of the water, which of course uh, we need in order to calculate the stress. Remember that the modulus, by definition, is equal to the stress, oops, stress divided by the strain. And the strain, by definition, of course, is a change in the volume over the original volume. All right. Now let's see what the change in the volume would be if we allow the, the water to expand using the coefficients for the metal and the coefficients for the water. So first of all, uh, we can see that the change in the volume, hmm, let's see here, how should we do that? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the net coefficient of volume expansion that's going to be equal to the volume expansion and ooh, that's not a very good beta let me try it again there we go for the water minus three times the linear coefficient of the metal because what we want to do is we want to find the net increase in the volume of the water minus of course the amount of allowable volume increase by the metal. The metal is going to increase in volume a little bit. The water is going to increase a lot. We want to find the difference. And of course, we need to find the equivalent volume coefficient for the metal. So this is for the metal. So that gives us, uh, let's see here, 3.9 times 10 to the minus 4 per centigrade degree minus 3 times that, which would be 6.0 times 10 to the minus 5 per centigrade degree. Subtract this from this, that would be equal to 3.9, that would be equal to 3.3 times 10 to the minus 4 per centigrade degree. So that would be the net expansion coefficient due to the increase in the temperature. Let's see here, so we have 3.9 e to the 4 minus minus 6 e to the 5 minus equals yes. Just want to make sure sometimes things get a little confusing. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the net change in the volume. So we're going to find the delta V, which is going to be the original volume times the net bulk coefficient, the net volume coefficient, times the change in the temperature. And so that would be the delta V is equal to V initial times 3.3 times 10 to the minus 4 per centigrade degree multiply times 65 centigrade degrees. So take that, multiply times 65, and we get the delta V is equal to V initial times 0.02145. All right, so the centigrade degrees cancel out. All right. So, the strain, which by definition is a change in volume of the original volume, is going to be equal to V initial times 0.02145 divided by V initial. So, you see the V initials cancel out, and the strain is going to be equal to 0.02145. Now we want to know the change in the pressure. Now notice that the units for stress are pascals, and so are the units for pressure. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to calculate the stress. So the stress is going to be equal to the bulk modulus times the strain. And so the stress is also the change in the pressure. It's the buildup of the pressure that we're trying to find. 
it's an increase in the stress, so the change in the pressure is equal to the bulk modulus, which is 2.1834 times 10 to the 9 pascals, multiplied times the strain, which is 0 0.02145. That's the change in the pressure. So multiply times 2.1834 e to the ninth equals, so that's, uh, let's see here, that's equal to 4.68, 4.68 times 10 to the seven pascals. Now, of course, we can convert that to, um, to atmospheres. So if we then multiply this, so, um, Let's go ahead and put a line there. So I'm going to multiply this times one atmosphere is equal to 101,325 pascals. So divide this by 101,325. So that means that the change in the pressure is equal to 462 atmospheres, which is quite remarkable. Imagine having a, a big metal ball filled with water you raise the temperature a mere 65 degrees centigrade and the pressure inside increases to an enormous 462 times atmospheric pressure, which is quite a bit. So there'll be an enormous amount of pressure just with a 65 degrees centigrade increase. And that's because the much greater expansion coefficient for water compared to the expansion coefficient for the metal. And that is how it's done.